Hello Capricorn and welcome to your August 2023 tarot card reading. Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. If you are new, my name is Jane. So this month is a really cool month. I'm very excited about August. I think this is kind of the the month where we really start to awaken as the sun comes into its dignified position here in Leo. And then we move on into Virgo, which is gonna help with the activity levels, which could be really, really fantastic for us. Now, I do apologize. I did not do the July astrology videos. Um, for those of you who have been with me on my journey, know that I have some health issues. And actually June and July, there were some things that came up and it was just a lot harder to do things. I have to prioritize my Soul Seekers group, so I always try to get their content out. Um, this month I am hoping to do the August. We'll see how everything goes, the August astrology videos, so keep your eyes open for that. Um, if I don't get it, it's probably just because I'm struggling just a little bit. Um, so feel free to watch these tarot readings for either your sun, moon, or rising sign. Um, if you're here for love, you can certainly check out your Venus sign as well. And that's pretty much it. Thanks everyone for being here. And with no further ado, let's go ahead and get into the reading. Hello Capricorn. Welcome to your August 2023 tarot card reading. So we're going to get started this month with a card from my intuitive deck. So let's see what comes through here for Capricorn. Okay. There might be some distractions, you know, that kind of pull focus a little bit, but generally speaking, it feels like if you want, okay, if you, if you will, if you kind of direct yourself in a specific way, you can have an incredibly clear shot type of month, meaning whatever your goals are, whatever the ambitions that you have, this is a month where you can literally go from point A to point B without a lot of nonsense. Okay, now there will be distractions. Okay, there will be things that try to pull focus and things that demand your time and energy and whatnot. However, I don't know that they are going to be severe enough or disruptive enough to really keep you from your goal. The only way that they're going to be big enough is if you make them big enough in your mind. I think you're really supported. Uh, right now to have a clear path. And sometimes people don't always know exactly what they're working toward, you know, and sometimes people feel like, you know, kind of lost in terms of their direction and whatnot. But I think you have at least a general idea that is good enough so that when you wake up in the morning, you can say, all right, these are the things I'm going to do. This is how I want my life to be structured these are the tasks that need to be implemented in order to do this other thing. So it feels easy to me. It feels like, you know, it, it can be, it can be easy if you want it to be. Um, and if you say no to things and you say no to people and you prioritize the important things, and it might only be a few things, and there might need to be some stuff that gets put on the back burner. Um, but I think it's worth it to do that. You can always make up for that kind of stuff later, but it's worth it to prioritize the top priorities. Okay. So let's see what the major arcana is for Capricorn. Okay. Ooh, the lover is beautiful. Now the lover speaks on lots of different levels. First and foremost, it always speaks to choices. There's always choices. And sometimes we underestimate the power of our choices because they seem so menial and they seem so insignificant. Um, even waking up in the morning and choosing what to eat for breakfast, you know, are you going to choose something that's going to kind of slow you down? Or are you going to choose something that ultimately nourishes your body and something that can, you know, really help you throughout the day? Something small like that is, is important. So paying attention to the small and of course the big choices as well. We also have a, a layer again, multi-layered here with this lover's card. The next layer is a sense of wholeness within yourself. You know, a lot of people have, you know, throughout life, throughout traumas, throughout childhood stuff, throughout a lot of experiences, you know, we've become very fragmented people. And 
right now I think it's an option for Capricorn to operate from a place of wholeness, to operate from a place of unity within. Now this could be a sense of unity internally within yourself, but if you have a partner or someone that you're doing something with, this can also indicate working very well with your person. Okay. There's a layer of communication with the lovers and being sure to communicate. Now I will tell you that communication right now, you know, I think it's still good. Mercury is in rulership now in Virgo, but Mercury is going to start slowing down. All right. I do love the fact that Mercury is coming into a conjunction with Mars in Virgo. So if there are issues and conversations that need to be had, you are supported in that the ninth house aspecting the third house, which is the house of communication. I think that's positive for you, Capricorn. But as we make our way closer and closer to the, you know, to the 23rd, which is when Mercury retrogrades, the sun comes into Virgo and a Mercury retrograde happen on the exact same day. But that Mercury retrograde is happening in an exact opposition with Neptune, which is weird. Okay. So there can be a lot of weird stuff that happens. So if there are issues, my recommendation is to take care of it in the beginning of August right away and not wait, because if you wait, Neptune may come in and kind of like, just make it not so productive and strange. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at who is in the environment that you need to be aware of. Capricorn, who do you need to be aware of as you make your way through the month of August? beautiful knight of wands. I love a knight of wands because it's buoyant. It's optimistic. It's adventurous. And I think this is an aspect of Capricorn that doesn't get enough love. It's the fun part of Capricorn. It's the adventurous side. And this is someone that I think mirrors that a lot. Um, Capricorn is a zodiac sign that definitely loves to learn. It's associated with learning. It's associated with becoming a master and building a craft and becoming very good at what you do. And there is a lot of adventure even in that hard work. Yes, but also a lot of play and experimentation and expansion that occurs through those experiences. This is someone that kind of brings the light in. This is someone you can have a lot of fun with that you can laugh with. You can go out, you can be social with. If you're dating, this is probably someone that you'd have a ton of fun with as well. And because there is so much sexuality in the chart right now, this is probably someone that you could have a lot of fun with sexual intimacy as well. Um, if this is a significant other, it kind of feels like, you know, they just sort of lighten the load. Now keep in mind that this may also be a little bit of a distraction too, but it, I don't know that it's going to be a super disruptive one. It might be a fun, uh, release, you know, like if you're being so organized and so structured all day at night, this is when you can kind of unwind, relax. This person can help you get your mind off of things. They can talk to you about things that are unrelated to the stuff you're thinking about all day long. And maybe there's kind of a, a kind of a, a battery recharge aspect with this Knight of wands. So don't be afraid to, to go out and be social. Don't be afraid to connect with the people that you enjoy being with. Um, it's not going to pull focus. In fact, actually it may help you be more productive during the day. I think a Knight of wands is someone that you can share a vision with. You can have big conversations with, and they often, you know, really believe in you. This is always someone who has your back, who stands in your corner and cheers you on. There's not a lot of jealousy with the Knight of wands. So it's not as though they're going to see you succeed and have some sort of jealousy or resentment towards you. Certainly not the case. Um, they're just going to be like, go for it. <laughs> You're awesome. You deserve it. You're amazing. Go, go, go. And they're going to help you feel a lot more confident within yourself as well. So I really love that. So make sure to spend time with them. All right. Nine card block for Capricorn. What else does Capricorn need to know? Conflict and defeat, obstacles and challenges. spiritual union. Okay. Well, I love the spiritual union card with the lovers. So it does signify some kind of a strong mental or emotional, or maybe both type of connection. If that is with the Knight of wands, that's great. Now, some of you may not know who this Knight of wands is. There is a lot of romance in the chart. 
Okay. So it is possible that some of you might be meeting someone. I'm not saying it has to be in August, but I feel like it's around. So if you're single and you're hoping that maybe this is a love interest, I would say it's highly likely that you might be introducing something like that into your life. And it does feel both passionate but also compatible as well. It's not just passion and it's not just compatibility. It's a nice combination of both, which often, you know, really speaks to longevity. Uh, conflict and defeat with obstacles and challenges. This I feel like is not necessarily the way August is going but maybe this is how you're coming into August. Maybe there's something that you just sort of thrown your hands up and said, all right, universe, you take care of it because I clearly am not doing such a bang up job with it. Um, and you might have difficult personalities that you need to deal with and contend with. You may have egos and pride of other people sometimes. I don't know that you should be the one to rush in and try to fix anything. I don't know that you should be the one that kind of takes that burden on. I know Capricorn often does because that's just kind of the nature of being Saturn ruled. You tend to weigh, you know, wear the weight of the world on your shoulders, maybe a little too much if I can say that. Um, but there are a lot of things that are not your responsibility. And I, you know, with all these little distractions on the side, this might be exactly one of the things. Let other people resolve their problems. Let other people fix their issues. And I know you want to be there as like an emotional support or whatever. And I guess you can be but I have a feeling that's also going to be something that you might need to turn away and be like, I can't, I can't be there for you right now, unless it's really, really important, unless it really matters. And it's not that you're being cold. It's not that you're turning your back on anyone you love. It's that you're trying to get somewhere with your life. It's that something matters to you that you have a value, right? You have an ambition and you're feeling this charge to go for it. And sitting down with someone and listening to them whine about their life circumstances is probably not going to be where you want to be. All right. So that might need to be, maybe that's a little bit of an internal conflict for you because I know you want to be, I just don't know that it's the smartest choice. You've got your own things to really deal with. And even though I'm talking about this being a straight shot, it doesn't mean that there are not going to be things that come up, right? There's going to be things you need to learn. There's going to be, again, choices that you're going to need to make. There are maybe even going to need to be sacrifices that you make as well. So you make sacrifices, you deal with the problems, you, you power through and you move on. This is going to require enough energy. You don't need to be in the pit with a bunch of people who are whining and complaining about their life and not doing anything about it. Okay. And that's what I love about the Knight of wands is that so the opposite spiritual union. It's so the opposite of whining and complaining about circumstances, you know, and I'm not saying people don't have like, it's not like their problems do not have merit because they may have merit. But moving forward right now, astrologically for everyone, this is about picking yourself up by your bootstraps and fixing it yourself, right? North node is in Aries now, Jupiter is in Taurus. This is self-reliance at its finest. And it's just what's in the stars right now. When the North node moves into Pisces, I'll be singing a different tune. But I mean, really, truly, this is a time of self-reliance. And we need to make sure <laughs> that other people you know, to support their journey in self-reliance too. All right, let's take a look. What else Capricorn? New beginnings, beautiful. Mental conflict. Accelerated motion. So... I mean, the mental conflict, again, it's probably going to be a lot of, oh, well, I should be doing that. 
that's where the mental conflict is really going to come in. I should be doing that. I should help. I should be over there. I should be going to this thing. I should, I should, I should. But all of those things probably have nothing to do with where you ultimately want to go or very little to do with where you want to go. And when I look at this new beginnings, this does feel a little, a little bit more so for Capricorn than anybody else, because this Leo season, this Venus retrograde is happening in the eighth house. So there is a cleansing purification process that's going on specifically for Capricorn right now. Um, whenever we go through eighth house stuff and whenever there's something significant going on there, it does feel like there is kind of a, a blank slate that is revealing itself. Okay. Now it's not a, a huge one. It's just, a you know, it's a small period of time, a couple of months with Venus, you know, a few months. Um, but yet it does feel like we're being washed clean. Like we're in the washing machine and all the stains are coming out. We have an opportunity now to like, to really try again or to, to really go for it, to start over, to start fresh, to do something new. And a lot of this other stuff up here, it's like the past trying to get its hooks into your present, you know? And, and I think that's one of the reasons why you have to set such firm boundaries. You have to say no to stuff right now, Capricorn, because you don't want the past to get its hooks in you. Because if it gets its hooks in you, it, there's a sacrifice of the future. There's a sacrifice of what could be. And I don't think Capricorn is in a position to want to allow that to happen. When I say accelerated motion, this is probably something that feels exciting. Especially if you have something specific that you're working toward. The idea that, oh, here's my goal, and there is going to be accelerated motion toward my goal that's exciting. That's something that we should be happy about. And we should feel good about, and we should feel ready for. Okay. Cause I do think that if you can say no to things in spite of the war that's going on in your head about what you should be doing, if you can say no to things and stay on that track, you will notice things starting to snowball in such a beautiful way. And the more and more it grows, the quicker it starts to move, the more enthusiastic you become and the more aligned with that new self and that new life you become. See, this is what the whole, remember I was talking about like the wholeness of yourself with that lover's card and the choices that you have to make to make a choice from being a whole person and not being a fragmented person. A lot of these types of situations and these people and these issues that, you know, other people want you to help them deal with. It's like just taking a piece of you. And so if you feel like someone is trying to take a piece of you, or a piece of your time or a piece of whatever, that's how you know that you're operating from a fragmented place. And when you're not able to give your full focus, that's how you know you're not coming from a whole place. But when you have this new beginning, I know for a fact, Capricorn, that you are all in on whatever this is. There's no fragmentation. There's no separation. This is just like the wholeness of you. And it is a beautiful thing and it feels good. Okay. It feels right. It feels like things are going in a good direction. And then it does. And you start to question like why you ever allowed yourself to fragment yourself in the past ever. And then you keep going and you keep growing and you keep seeing results and it just kind of gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So sacrifice, which is like the hanged man in the traditional tarot decks. We have the throat, uh, I'm sorry, the crown chakra and harmony which is like another lover's card so we got two lover's card uh, cards actually with this set of tarot um i like the word sacrifice because i i think that is something to keep in the front of your mind you are being asked to sacrifice something but it it when it, 
but it's not going to make you feel less. A sacrifice does not make you feel like you're missing out on something. Maybe you are sacrificing uh, a really difficult friendship. Friendship, but it's difficult. Maybe you do need to sacrifice it. Maybe you are sacrificing a comfortable situation for a not so comfortable one. But I think this particular sacrifice it just feels like it's the right time. So I don't think it feels all that scary. And with the crown chakra, it actually, to me, feels inspired. It feels directed. It feels connected. And like, let's use a love example. Cause I, I think some of you are thinking about love in relationships. You guys know, I'm not specifically a love tarot reader. It's not usually what I focus on, but let's say, for example, you are single and you do meet someone. This might be a sacrifice of your single life, you know, because it just feels right. It feels like it's time. It feels like you're ready. And maybe they're ready too. And maybe the two of you are just ready. And so you can just move on with a relationship without having it be this whole complicated thing, you know? And I kind of am sensing that some of you might be going through that and with the harmony card, the spiritual union card. There's a lot of love here. If this is a professional relationship, you know, it's just ready to take on a new endeavor. It's ready to build a new business. It's ready to invest in a new project or a new asset or something, you know, it's just time and someone is completely on board with you. And that's what I love about this Knight of wands. It's like, yeah, let's freaking go. Let's go. It's very exciting. So let's pull out the clarifiers. So the cards I'm about to pull out, I'm going to talk for another 20 to uh, like 20 to 30 minutes about all these cards. So it's kind of like a whole second reading, but we get a little bit deeper into all of these. And uh, the, the link for the comprehensive reading will be found in the description box down below. So be sure to check it out. So let's take a look here. Let's clarify the lovers. What is it that Capricorn needs to know about the lovers? Nine of cups, a card of wishes coming true. Oh, you know, and I got an ace of swords down. It fell on the floor. I'll pick it up in just a minute. We have the seven of cups. Now for the environment. King of Coins, Knight of Swords, and Strength. A lot of different people feel social to me. So the Conflict and Defeat card. Let's see what comes through. Queen of Cups, Eight of Coins, the World. The world with the, the fool card of the new beginnings, like an end in a beginning, feels like a nice transition for you, Capricorn. Ten of Cups. Another King of Coins. Okay, feeling more positive about that King of Coins now. Ace of Coins. Spiritual Union. Five of Coins. Beautiful. King of Swords, Six of Cups, the Moon. I love the Moon. Ooh, another Two of Cups, Ten of Wands. Ooh, Ten of Swords. Okay, Eight of Swords, Page of Swords, another Ace of Swords. We have the Hermit card. Seven of Swords, Five of Wands, Three of Cups, Page of Coins, and a Knight of Coins, Beautiful Chariot, and Knight of Cups. Really like the Knights for you, Capricorn. I really, really do. Okay, so this is where we're going to pick up in the comprehensive. So if you want to join, you are more than welcome. Thank you all so much. You guys know how much I love you. Have an amazing August, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.